What I have right here is a kit of two brand new 13th gen Intel Core processors. Huge thanks to Intel for sending this over, by the way. This first one here is the Core i5-13600K. It's an unlocked 14 core CPU with a boost frequency up to 5.1 gigahertz. And this guy right here is the current top model of the product stack. It's the Core i9-13900K with 24 unlocked cores and a max frequency up to 5.8 gigahertz with Intel Thermal Velocity Boost. I'm gonna take this brand new flagship Core i9-13900K, drop it into my main system over here and see what it can do compared to the 12900K that's in there right now. I built this system about a year ago for content creation and gaming, and it's been really good, but I wanted some extra cores to give me some more flexibility with multitasking. As good as the 12900K is, my video production workflow regularly pushes it to its limits, which means I don't have a lot of performance left over. And that's not the best situation if I have a video rendering and I want to work on some high-res graphics or something else at the same time. 13th gen Intel Core processors are basically an expanded version of the performance hybrid design that we first saw with the 12th gen products, where you have a mix of P-cores and E-cores optimized for single and multi-threaded workloads all working together. Plus, this generation brings with it a whole bunch of other new improvements as well, like bigger cache sizes, improved P-cores, higher clock speeds, and my personal favorite, more E-cores. Where the Core i9-12900K had 8 P-cores and 8 E-cores, the new 13900K has 8 P-cores and 16 E-cores. That's a massive generational uplift, 100% increase in E-cores. I can't wait to see how this thing's gonna rip through multi-threaded workloads. And it's not just the Core i9 that got a boost, they also beefed up the Core i5 and i7 SKUs as well. 13th gen launched with the Z790 chipset that basically adds a few new features to the platform, like an increased amount of PCI Express lanes coming from the chipset, support for faster DDR4 and DDR5 memory, and more connectivity options. And Intel kept the same LGA1700 socket that they introduced with 12th gen, meaning these new parts are backwards compatible with 600 series chipset motherboards after a BIOS update. This is the kind of thing that can lower overall platform costs because 600 series boards should be cheaper than the new 700 series. So that offers a bit more flexibility for system builders. You want the latest and greatest features? Get the newest chipset. You want to save money because you're on a budget? Go with the old one. I've got a Z690 board in my system and I've already updated the BIOS to add 13th gen support. So my upgrade's going to be pretty easy. First, I'm gonna loosen everything up and get this cooler off of here. And then I'm gonna clean up the IHS and also the cooler contact surface. I just wanna get all that thermal paste off of there and make sure everything's nice and clean. Now let's open up the socket and I'm gonna pull the 12900K out and drop in the new 13900K in its place. I'm gonna get some fresh thermal paste on there, a nice straight line down the middle ought to do it. And now I can reinstall the water block and I'll tighten the screws in a cross pattern to get even pressure and a good spread on that thermal paste. And that's gonna be it. Super quick and easy upgrade. It's kind of nice to not have to tear the whole thing apart to get a new motherboard installed just for a CPU upgrade. It saves a lot of time. All right, so we got the system up and running now and everything's looking pretty good so far. There's the 13900K. It looks like we're getting frequencies up to about 5.5 gigahertz and it's sitting around 37 to 40 degrees Celsius under the 360 millimeter AIO. Now keep in mind, this is not a clean test system. It's my regular everyday workstation and gaming PC and there's a ton of background processes going on. So I wouldn't be surprised if we could get those idle temps a little bit lower under optimal conditions on a clean test bench. But that's not the point of this video. I wanna show you real world usage with a regular everyday PC. In this case, my workstation. Now let's get into some content creation. This is where I'm really interested to see the difference between 12th and 13th gen. This is a video project in DaVinci Resolve that I released a little while back. It's all high resolution 4K footage. There's a mix of multi-camera clips, graphics, visual effects, and multiple channels of audio. So there's a lot going on in here. I'm not even gonna worry about timeline performance, like scrubbing back and forth on footage with the playhead, because it was perfect with the 12900K. So there's no way the 13900K with its more cores and faster clocks is gonna be anything different. The big deal for me is when it comes to rendering the project. I wanna see how long it's gonna take to create the file, how much performance I have left over while it's doing that, and what kind of temperatures it's hitting. So let's use the highest quality settings with the QuickTime codec. We'll add this to the render queue and start the render. Now let's take a look at the task manager to see what's happening here. Looks like Resolve's using about 80%-ish of the CPU. Seems to fluctuate up and down, like sometimes there's a spike up to 100 and then sometimes there's some down all the way to 50 I saw, I think. Now that's a noticeable improvement from the 12900K where I would regularly see 90 to 100%. So that means I now have some more CPU power available to jump into another app and work on something else like a thumbnail for this video, for example. That right there is gonna help improve my productivity and that's exactly what I was looking for with this upgrade. 
Taking a look at the clock speeds, it looks like we're getting an all core boost up to about 5.5 gigahertz on the P cores and 4.3 gigahertz on the E cores. And that's up quite a bit from the roughly 4.9 and 3.7 gigahertz on the 12900K. The maximum temperature I saw was 99 degrees Celsius. That's a whole 15 degrees hotter than what I saw with the 12900K rendering the same project. That's insanely hot, but not all that surprising of a result because the 13900K is a much more power hungry CPU and I knew that going into this. And keep in mind, I have this running under a big 360 millimeter high performance AIO. So, you know, don't take cooling lightly with this chip. If you're thinking of picking one up, you need to invest in a good cooling solution, especially if you're rendering video or anything else that's really gonna push the CPU. Looking at performance, it took the system about 214 seconds to render the file. That's 47 seconds less than the 12900K, which is about 18% faster. That's a nice improvement, and with the number of videos I render in a year, this should add up and save me quite a bit of time. And less time rendering videos means more time for other stuff. Now it's unlikely all those extra E cores are really going to make any type of a difference in gaming because most games are just not massively multi-threaded. But the higher clock P cores are exactly the kind of thing that can make a difference. I always crank the graphics and resolution settings all the way up as high as I can in my games. So I'm either at like ultra wide or 4K and at those resolutions the GPU is going to be the bottleneck. So I'm personally not expecting any major gains. Here's Cyberpunk 2077 running at 3440 by 1440. Average frame rates are about the same, with the 13900K coming out only about 2% faster. But if you're a 1080p gamer on a 12th gen CPU, that's where you can find more of a difference thanks to those higher clock speeds on 13th gen. Obviously, performance always varies from game to game and with the graphic settings you choose, but generally speaking, faster cores should mean more FPS if you're playing games at resolutions around 1080p. For me, the move to 13th gen with the Core i9-13900K is a noticeable improvement for my content creation workflow. It wasn't that long ago that CPUs topped out at just 4 cores, and now I'm here working with 24 physical cores and 32 threads. This technology is awesome, it enables creators like me to work more efficiently, and that FPS boost is nice if you're a 1080p gamer and want to be able to get every last frame out of your system. I'm really looking forward to playing around with this new CPU and some of my other creative apps over the next little while. Also, Intel just launched a brand new overclocking utility. Maybe I'll jump in there and mess around a little and see if I can get even more performance out of this thing. Alright guys, thanks for watching. Give the video a thumbs up and get subscribed for more content. And we'll see you soon.